Okay, so these are the questions and answers on quantitative analysis. So let's take a look at the correct answers for these questions. The first question you had was describe a physical test to show that the colorless liquid is pure water. Do you remember the physical test for water? Heat to boiling, it should boil at 100 degrees centigrade. Describe a chemical test that you could perform to show that ammonium nitrate contains ammonium ions. So this is test for ammonium ions. What was the test for ammonium ions? Add aqueous sodium hydroxide, warm gently, bubbles of gas are formed that turn damp red litmus to blue. So this is what your answer should be. Did you memorize all of these tests? You should have. Outline how you would carry out a flame test. How did we say we should carry out a flame test? Clean a platinum wire by dipping it in concentrated HCl. Then dip the wire in the salt. In this order, remember. Expose the wire to the non-luminous flame of the Bunsen burner. Observe the emitted light. This is how you carry out a flame test. State the color that lithium ions produce in a flame test. Do you remember the color for lithium ions? Red. A sample of medicine containing lithium sulfate is dissolved in water. Describe how you would test the solution for presence of sulfate. What was the test for sulfate? Add dilute nitric acid, then aqueous barium nitrate. You get white precipitate. This point. Write a chemical equation for this reaction. So he's saying write a chemical equation for the reaction between barium nitrate and lithium sulfate. He says you're testing lithium sulfate. So you need to write reaction between barium nitrate and lithium sulfate that will give you barium sulfate plus lithium nitrate remember that the white precipitate is, that is formed is the barium sulfate so if he asks for state symbols the barium sulfate is the white precipitate so that's the solid that is formed and of course we said when he says write a chemical equation he automatically means that you need to balance it so do not forget to balance it um, addition of sodium hydroxide solution can be used to distinguish between iron 2 and iron 3. So this is uh, iron 2 sulfate and iron 3 sulfate. Uh, you do understand how I know that it is iron 2 or iron 3. FeSO4 is iron 2 because there are no numbers under it. That means that the valency of iron is the same as sulfate. So that means that the valency of iron is 2. In the other one, Fe2SO4, all three, this means that the valency of iron is three. So how do we distinguish between iron two and iron three? We add sodium hydroxide. The iron two gives a green precipitate. The iron three gives a reddish brown precipitate. Compound X is a blue crystalline solid. It contains copper two ions, sulfate ions, and water of crystallization. So this is something that has copper ions and sulfate ions. A student dissolved some of this compound in water and then added sodium hydroxide. She obtained a blue precipitate. What do you think is the formula of the blue precipitate? If I add sodium hydroxide to something that has copper something, copper ions, then it will form copper hydroxide. And that is what gives you the blue precipitate. Another student tested a solution of compound X for sulfate ions using dilute hydrochloric acid followed by a few drops of barium chloride. Why is the dilute hydrochloric acid necessary in this test? Remember we said when we're testing for sulfate, you have to add acid first. Why are you adding the acid? To remove any carbonate ions that may be present that would form white precipitate. To show that the liquid produced by burning hydrogen was pure water, a student carried out a chemical test and a physical test. The chemical test involved adding a few drops of the liquid to a sample of anhydrous copper sulfate. Remember we said the, cup, the chemical test for water was add anhydrous copper sulfate. It, it should change from what color to what color? From white to blue. Okay. Then he says, place a cross in one box to show the formula of the compound formed in this case. So when you add water to the anhydrous copper sulfate, it becomes what we call hydrated. That's the blue thing. The blue substance is the hydrated copper sulfate. How do you write hydrated copper sulfate? You should know that it is copper sulfate dot five water. Okay.
The physical test involved measuring a property of the liquid. State a suitable physical property and give the value for pure water. We said if you're doing a physical test for water, what do you test for? You test the boiling point. And if it is pure water, what would be the boiling point? 100 degrees centigrade. Describe a test for alkenes. What was the test for alkenes? Add bromine water, turns from reddish brown to colors. Please memorize these tests. You have to memorize them. There is no other way. Describe the test for hydrogen. What was the test for hydrogen? Insert a lighted splint. What happens? It pops. Okay? Without using an indicator, describe how you could show that a compound is an acid. Now, always remember that these tests that we use, if you are using an acid, to, we use an acid to test for what? We use an acid to test for carbonate. That means you can use carbonate to test for acid. So I know that if I have carbonate and I add acid to it, so add sodium carbonate, for example, then I should get bubbles of gas that turn lime water milky. So remember that these tests can be opposite. So I use acid to test for carbonate, but I can use carbonate to test for acid. Okay. Describe how you could show that the reaction mixture contained iodide iron. What was the test for iodide? Add dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate solution. What iodide should give? A yellow precipitate. Okay. Give a chemical test for chlorine. What was the test for chlorine? Insert damp blue litmus paper. It bleaches. That is the test for chlorine. And this applies to chlorine as a gas or chlorine dissolving water. Chemical tests can be used to detect ions in solids and in aqueous solutions. A solid produces a gas when heated with sodium hydroxide solution. Damp red litmus paper is turned blue by the gas. So he added sodium hydroxide, he got a gas that turns damp red litmus paper to blue. This is test for what? We should realize this is test for ammonium. When dilute nitric acid is added to an aqueous solution, followed by silver nitrate solution, a yellow precipitate form. This is test for what? If I add nitric acid and silver nitrate and I get yellow precipitate, I have iodide. Okay? When dilute hydrochloric acid is added to a solid, a gas forms. Which of these ions is present in the solid? So he added dilute hydrochloric acid and gave off a gas. I need hydrochloric acid to give a gas. This is test for what? Carbonate. Sodium hydroxide solution is added separately to three solutions. One of them has copper 2, the other has iron 2, the third has iron 3. So what colors should you get for the precipitates? You remember the color of the precipitate? If you add sodium hydroxide to each of these, copper should give what? Copper should give blue. So your answer is C or D. And then iron 2 gives what? gives green and iron 3 gives brown precipitate. Do we understand how to answer these? Okay, when barium chloride solution is added to an aqueous solution of the compound, a white precipitate forms. When dilute hydrochloric acid is added to the mixture, the precipitate disappears and a colorless solution forms. Which of these ions is present? Okay, you're going to ask yourself. Barium chloride and acid is originally a test for sulfate. But we are supposed to put the hydrochloric acid first before the barium chloride. And if I get, I put hydrochloric acid and then barium chloride and I still get a white precipitate, that is a sulfate. But in this case, he got, he put barium chloride first and he got a precipitate. And we said barium chloride will form a precipitate either with sulfate or with carbonate. And the difference is if you add acid, the if it is a carbonate, the precipitate disappears and the color solution forms. So, in this case, you did not have sulfate. If you had sulfate, it would still remain. You had a carbonate. That's why the precipitate disappeared. Do we understand that? Okay. This is one kind of question. Tests are done on a sample of a solid X. Solid X contains ammonium ion, one other cation, and one anion. The table lists details of the test done on solid X and observations made for each test. Now, the first test says add dilute sodium hydroxide and warm gas giving off. Gas turns damp litmus paper from red to blue. This was test for what? What did you get for that? What is it that when you add sodium hydroxide to it and warm, it gives off a gas that turns damp 
uh, litmus paper from red to blue. This is test for ammonium ions. So this is the NH4 plus ions that he says we have. Okay. Then he did a flame test. The flame test gave lilac. Which one gives lilac? The one that gives lilac is the potassium ion. And remember, we're dealing with ions, not the metals themselves. And then he said, a sample of solid X is dissolved in deionized water. The solution is divided into three test tubes, and the following tests are done. To the first test tube, he added acid, no observable change. Remind me again, what is tested using dilute hydrochloric acid only? You remember? Adding dilute hydrochloric acid was test for carbonates. And if I have carbonate, I should see bubbles of gas. I didn't see any bubbles of gas, so that means that test A tells me that I don't have any carbonates. Now, test B says to the second test tube, he added dilute nitric acid and a few drops of silver nitrate solution. Again, silver nitrate solution is test for what? It's test for chloride, bromide, iodide. If I have any of them, I should have a precipitate with a specific color. If he doesn't get any change, no observable change, that means he does not have chloride, bromide, or iodide. Now, test C says to the third test tube, add dilute hydrochloric acid and a few drops of barium chloride. Again, barium chloride is test for what? For sulfate. Now, if I have sulfate, I'm supposed to get a white precipitate. So he got a white precipitate, so that means that he has sulfate. So identify the gas given off in test one. Which one was test one when he added dilute sodium hydroxide and the gas given off turns damp red litmus to blue? Then the gas is ammonia. Give the formula of the other cation present in solid X. We, he did the flame test and he got lilac. And we said lilac means what? means I have potassium ion, so that's K plus, not just K. State what test 3A and 3B tell you about solid X. Test 3A, let's go back to test 3A. We've forgotten what was test 3. Test 3A says to the first test tube, add dilute hydrochloric acid, no change. And we said that means that I don't have any carbonate. Test 3B was the one that said what? Was the one that was testing... Um, Dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate. So silver nitrate, we said, is test for what? Chloride, bromide, iodide. He didn't see anything, so there is no chloride, bromide, or iodide. Identify what he found, the anion that he found in the solid. We said he found sulfate ions. Okay, the ions present in ionic compound can be identified using simple tests. Some cations can be identified using flame tests. Some anions can be Identify the observing reactions. Now, table one shows the flame test colors for four cations. Now, these are things that we don't have in our syllabus. So, he gives you the colors. So, he says cesium should give blue, rubidium should give violet, strontium should give red, tantalum should give blue. And then he gives another table that shows three tests that he did. So, he did hydrochloric acid, magnesium chloride, and methyl orange on these anions and the first question says use the information in the tables to answer these questions in the test compound x gives a red flame and produces effervescence with hydrochloric acid state two possible identities first of all a red flame is from the table is strontium so it is strontium something and he said it gives what it gives effervescence when hydrochloric acid is added which ones give effervescence when hydrochloric acid is added? In the table, it says carbonate or hydrogen carbonate. Can you see that? So that means that the two possibilities that he has are strontium carbonate and strontium hydrogen carbonate. In the test, compound Y gives a blue flame and produces a yellow color when methyl orange is added. Okay, let's go back to our table. And which one gives a blue flame? Which one gives a blue flame? Cesium gives a blue flame. Now, which one gives a yellow color when methyl orange is added? Carbonate, hydrogen carbonate, and hydroxide. Can you see that? These are the possible answers. So he says, a student concludes that compound Y is tantalum hydroxide. 
give two reasons why this conclusion may not be correct. Now, blue flame, which ones gave blue flame? Cesium and tantalum gave blue flame. So that means that it doesn't necessarily mean it's tantalum. It could be cesium, not tantalum. And not necessarily hydroxide. We said it may be carbonate since it also gives yellow with methyl orange. Okay. Which additional tests from table 2 would show that the only anion in compound Y is the hydroxide ion? So we're trying to distinguish between hydroxide and the carbonate. We're going back here and we're going to see what do we use to um, distinguish between hydroxide and carbonate. Between hydroxide and carbonate, we can add hydrochloric acid because the hydrochloric acid, can we see that again? Let's go back and see that again. Hydrochloric acid with the carbonate gives effervescence with the hydroxide no change. So that will distinguish between both of them. Okay. Now, an aqueous solution contains either carbonate ions or hydrogen carbonate ions. Using only information from the tables, explain how you could decide if the solution contains carbonate or hydrogen carbonate. So we're trying to go back to the table and see a difference between carbonate and hydrogen carbonate. The only difference between them is the magnesium chloride. The magnesium chloride gives a white precipitate with carbonate and no change with the hydrogen carbonate. So we add magnesium chloride, the carbonate ion gives white, the hydrogen carbonate gives no change. Bromine reacts with iron 2 ions, other elements in group 7 may also react with iron 2. Describe an experiment to find out if chlorine reacts with iron 2 ions. So he put bromine with iron 2 ions and it changed into iron 3. So if it reacts, it should change to iron 3. If it doesn't react, it remains iron 2. So he wants to know if chlorine will react. So if chlorine will react, then I will have iron 3. If it doesn't react, then it, I will have only iron 2. So outline the method, test for the presence of iron 2 and any relevant safety precautions. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass the chlorine gas through the solution of iron 2 nitrate. Um, remember, he wants safety. So these, this is something that is using gases. So we have to do the experiment in a fume cupboard to avoid exposure to the harmful gas. And then you test the resulting solution using aqueous sodium hydroxide. If a reddish brown precipitate is formed, that means that the iron 2 has changed to iron 3, and that means there is a reaction. If no reaction occurs, then only the iron 2 will remain, and I will have only a green precipitate. Do we understand that? Okay, that's the end of our questions on qualitative analysis. Please study hard and um, be prepared for a quiz.